Let's try a problem that's a little bit more difficult. Okay, step number one, let's read the, let's read the question. Sarah opens an account with $4,500 and the account has an interest rate of 5% and it's APR compounded monthly. Okay, after four years, she invests an additional $3,000 in that account. And the question asks, after six years, what is the total balance going to be? Now, if we remember one of the assumptions uh, of using our F slash P factor, our, uh, when we're trying to find a future value of uh, an investment is that we don't make additional payments or withdrawals into the account. But we also can take a problem like this and split the problem up into components of the problem that do satisfy our assumptions. So let's write what we're given uh, for the first, uh, for the initial investment. Okay, so in this problem what we're going to do is we're going to break it up. We're going to look at the initial $4,500 investment here and we're going to separate that out from our later investment of $3,000 and add them together. Okay, so what we're given is an initial investment P of $4,500, an interest rate I of 5%, and remember we're compounding monthly so we're going to have to divide that by 12, and this is going to be per month. And then the number of interest periods that we're going to have uh, is over six years. So we need to say six times 12, which is going to equal 72. We have 72 interest periods in this problem. And what we need to find in this first section is F. What is F for that initial investment? And let's draw a cash flow diagram just for this first part. We start out, we've got six years. Let's draw six little tick marks here. We've got one year, two years, three years, four, five, and six. So label that zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're making our initial investment at time zero of $4,500. What we're concerned with is what is that value of that, that portion of the account? after six years. Since we have an interest rate of 5% over 12 per month, we're not going to be able to use our factor tables. And the reason for that is that we don't have a 5 twelfths factor table. So instead, we're going to have to use our formula for our F slash P. And remember that the formula for F slash P is F is equal to P times 1 plus I to the N. In this problem, we're going to say our P is $4,500 multiplied by 1 plus I. Remember, our I is 5.05 .05 over 12, and our N is 72. If we multiply that across, we simply get 6070 dollars and 58 cents. OK, now that's just the first part of the problem. Remember, we have a second investment to deal with. So let's draw quickly a uh, cash flow diagram for that second investment. And that investment's going to occur over two years. Okay, so we're going to draw this out. We've got zero, one, and two. Let's redraw this little portion here so we have the right distance. There we go. We're going to make an initial investment in this diagram of $3,000, okay? And that's gonna occur for only two years where we're gonna find F. Remember, it's two years because we, don't, we invest that in year four, and it's only gonna be gaining interest for two years because we were concerned with what happens in year six. One thing that I forgot to put in here in the uh, very beginning is the point of view. Remember, that's really important for our cash flow diagrams. Otherwise, they're incorrect. So our point of view in this is the investor. And that is also the case for the second part, where we have the investor here, too. So let's find the, the future value of the second investment. F is going to be equal to, again, P times 1 plus I to the N. And we're going to replace that with our $3,000 investment multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12, OK, 
Okay, and then we're going to raise that to an n in this case of 24. Okay, because we're going to we're going to only look at two years times 12, which is going to give us 24. So rather than write the givens out again uh, for interest of time, I'm just going to solve this portion of the problem for you. And that's going to equal 3,314 dollars and 82 cents for that portion of the investment. And remember, our total F is going to equal the sum of the two, which is 6,070 point five eight plus. Three thousand three hundred and fourteen eighty two, both in dollars, and that's going to equal a final amount of nine thousand three hundred eighty five dollars forty cents, which is the final future value of that account. And one last thing to do in these in all of these problems uh, is to look at the final answer. Did we get the right answer? Does the answer make sense? Sure, right? We're making we end up with nine thousand three hundred eighty-five. We've made two investments, one at forty-five hundred and one at three thousand over six years. So we're in the ballpark. We know we're probably pretty close.